this hundred only one will be develop one one will be you know, grow up and one will be ultimately uh, filling the entire endometrial uh, tube on the distal side you can see over here that's a very interesting part okay next if you can see in this mechanism let's take a look at this part so here you can see axon regenerate out of this hundred as i told you only one will be developed axon regenerate and the new myelin sheet forms over there in these cases uh, that is what takes place over there <coughs> Now in this regeneration process, actually, if you see, uh, this regeneration process used to start uh, uh, basically uh, 20 days after the injury and uh, it will be complete around, partially it will be complete around, it takes around 80 days, you can see over here. And during this time, if you see inside the uh, neural cell body, nasal granules, gall gap, butters will be appear, nucleus will be uh, appear over there and cell side, which was basically at the time after the injury, it will become uh, around this instructor that will be come to the original positions that things that types of changes will be found over there as well as uh, neurofibrils will be appear over there uh, that types of uh, regenerative changes takes place uh, in the cell body uh, as well as you have seen in the uh, damaged side we have seen new action develop and uh, that is uh, occupy the entire uh, new action develop uh, swan cells forming the myelin sheath that is uh, occupying the entire endometrial tube and finally forming the new uh, uh, finally uh, recovering the damage site so here few things is that a few things you need to uh, see over here the myelin sheath regenerations actually start after the two weeks after the two weeks of the injury and it is to, to complete this process to complete the uh, complete process or uh, to make it as like before it is takes around one year remember that in case of peripheral nervous system, if you see, this uh, basically takes one year to complete this entire process, actually, uh, and complete the entire regenerative uh, steps and entire regenerative process, you can see over here. Now, question is, you can see in this part, uh, uh, previously, axon size was like this. Now, once the regeneration takes place, it has become a little bit of smaller in diameter. Okay, that is the important things uh, in these cases. Once, if you damage one nerve fibers, peripheral nerve fibers, peripheral nerve fibers, if you damage it, it will not form as like original. So it will be developed, the axon tubes and all these things will be developed up to the 80% of the original one. Original one, if it is 100%, uh, that 100% uh, size will be not come. Come for the regenerative, uh, come, uh, come after the regenerations actually. So, uh, the regenerative or the new actions which have developed that will be around uh, uh, approximately 80% of the original one. So, it is you can see that's what is going to become small, it become thinner. You can see it's become smaller than this original uh, tube. You can see over here. That is what it's a very important thing you, you can see over here. As well as <coughs> here, uh, some sort of factors are there some sort of factors are there which are responsible for this process as we are talking about this one some sort of uh, uh, factors are there some sort of uh, uh, components are there which are responsible for these types of uh, regenerative processes basically the swan cells for uh, producing one important uh, factor that is called uh, 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 called nerve growth factor okay? that's called nerve growth factors actually uh, uh, neurotrophins neurotrophins three neurotrophins are many other neurotrophins actually um, as well as swan cells are producing cell addition molecules which are also responsible for this regeneration process uh, you can see in these cases as well as if you can see <coughs> uh, some other substances released by the uh, perineurium they're also responsible some uh, proteins basically released by the perineurium they're responsible to giving the way of this uh, uh, newly or uh, newly originated uh, actions to pass through this uh, endometrial tube it's giving a, a particular direction of the uh, uh, new action fibrils to pass through this endometrial uh, tube that is all like that many factors are there in this case many factors are there who are responsible for this regeneration basically uh, <laughs> basically in this part Okay, they are called the knob growth factors. They are called the knob growth factor. Just in case you can see neurotrophin 3, BDNF. Okay, brain derived, write down BDNF full. Write down brain derived, brain derived neurotrophic factor. Brain derived neurotrophic factor. brain derived neurotrophic factor okay now yes, sir yes sir. 
Yes, tell me. Neurofactorific factors, sir. Yes, factor. F factor. Now, here interesting part, you know, uh, it's very interesting that uh, uh, suppose uh, one of fibers which are responsible to carry the temperature sensations that is damaged. Now, sometimes some sort of uh, uh, some sort of misconnection <coughs> mis also uh, had takes place uh, in some cases. <coughs> that is very rare, but it has happened. Uh, the knob fiber which has damaged by any reasons knob fiber damaged which are responsible to carry the temperature sensation now that knob fibers uh, once regenerated it is making connection with the uh, particular uh, neurons which are responsible to carry the touch sensation understood it is possible the knob fiber which was carrying the temperature sensation it is cut it and it is regenerated absent time is also regenerated and once regeneration takes place, that time they make the synapse with the neurons which are responsible to carry the touch sensation. Now, what will be happen? If this test of communication takes place, the time once uh, you feel some sort of touch sensation, you, uh, some, uh, you, you touch somewhere or some, uh, uh, somebody touch you, you feel some sort of warm sensation. Understood? Because the uh, regenerated neurons basically responsible for to carry out the temperature sensation Unfortunately, it is made connection with the neuron which are responsible to carry the touch sensation. Now, uh, the touch receptors are there from that, that neurons are receiving the sensations uh, for the touch sensations. Now, in between, it is make the synapse with the uh, temperature receptor, temperature uh, neuron, temperature carrying neuron. So what will happen once you, uh, once you touch somewhere, you feel some sort of hot sensation some sort of temperature sensors that used to be happened well that is a uh, that is a, a types of <coughs> miscommunications uh, mis uh, connections used to be take place some cases but uh, okay so uh, in this process what you have seen that basically swan cells having important role swan cells having important role uh, uh, important role for this uh, uh, regeneration process what you can see so after the degeneration takes place, swan cells are responsible to produce some elongated process and they are responsible to occupy the uh, gap uh, around three, uh, three, three millimeter uh, maximum, it can uh, fill it up. And they'll be, uh, go for multiplications and uh, covering the endometrial tube, then uh, allowing the axons to regenerate, uh, multiple uh, uh, axon fibers will be produced and that will be, uh, out of that only one will be uh, grow up. That is what used to be takes place over there. <coughs> but that has happened in case of Peripheral nervous system. Peripheral in the peripheral nervous system, peripheral neural damage. If it is takes place, then only this regeneration takes place. But remember that if the nerve damage happened in the central nervous system, because in the central nervous system we have seen the important uh, cell which are responsible for myelinations. Can you tell me the name of that cells which are responsible for the myelination in the central nervous system? Central nervous system neurons. Hello, good endocytes neurons. Very good. Thank you. So oligodendrocytes, that's very important. They're responsible for the myelination of the neuron in the central nervous system. Now remember that, <clears throat> interesting part is that if the knob damage happened in the central nervous system, oligodendrocytes will be responsible to complete damage of that, uh, that neurons. Uh, uh, basically, it will not regenerate. It will not allow to regenerate. Understood. So by any reasons, if the neuron, any neuron damage in the central nervous system because of any types of conditions, whatever, irrespective to that, in that cases, the, center, the oligodendrocytes will not allow the neuron to be regenerated again. Dam gone means gone. Okay. But in case of peripheral nervous system, what you can see that uh, <coughs> uh, the regeneration process will be start after the 20 days over there. But uh, in case of uh, central nervous system, the oligodendrocytes will not allow to regenerate the uh, other uh, regenerate the uh, damaged neurons. That is very important things in these cases. So here we are talking about neurons in area and how they are regenerates and degenerations, basic things in these cases. Okay. Next, we'll go about uh, go for the uh, uh, the go for some of the mechanistic changes in the uh, membrane potential. So,
Is it visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, so uh, in this part, uh, if you can see, uh, we need to see important things here. Uh, this question asked in the last uh, last referred uh, referred by the examination was there in that uh, December. And this same question asked, what is resting moment potential? It is around I think. Uh, two marks question asked in this part. The last exam only, December exam. Okay, so uh, let's talk about. Uh, we have seen the nouns and all how they what are the types, classifications. Uh, in that part, we have seen the properties also. Uh, we have seen that uh, uh, very important part, regeneration and degeneration process, how it is takes place. That is also we have seen over there. Next, we'll talk about the <coughs> uh, here you can see the membrane potential. So, if somebody asks you, uh, what is your idea about the membrane potential? What is the answer? I'm not talking about resting membrane potential. I'm asking about the membrane potential. Anyone? Nafia. Sir. On the camera. One second, sir. We're in the market or somewhere. What happened? Tulasi, Venkata Tulsi. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. sir, electric potential between uh, intercellular fluid and extracellular fluid, sir. Say hey, once again. Sir, uh, electric potential between uh, intercellular fluid and uh, extracellular fluid, sir. Inside of the cell membrane and uh, out, out. Outside of the cell membranes. What is the potential difference? So it's the okay. potential difference between the outer uh, the ions present outside the the neural tube and inside, sir. On the camera. So my internet is actually not good over here. No problem, you can switch on because already sometimes I feel like I'm some ghost, really, I mean, nobody is listening. Uh, somebody that's what, anyway. <clears throat> some people say on oh, that is good for description. Okay, uh, next, Josna. Who is Josna? Josna, huh? yes, what do you mean by this? Uh, membrane potential. So when a neuron has a rest, each voltage neuron has a resting. Neuron has a certain potential sir, during its resting period. Hmm. It is known as membrane potential. No. No. So. So I think, I think uh, it is a membrane it is the membrane potential when it is in action. It's a highest uh, membrane potential. So membrane potential is a difference between the charges in outer and inner cell. So many people have many ideas. Okay. Uh, just I'll show you one picture here. Okay. It's good for you to understand. Look at this. 
if you see uh, different cells different cells uh, different types of cells they are different in one respect because uh, they are uh, inside and outside of the cell of a different cell any cell nerve cell muscle cells our cell whatever it is irrespective to any cells so uh, they are having different in inside and outside <coughs> ionic ionic balance inside ions will be different uh, in different concentration outside will be different in different concentration so that will be takes place over there now <coughs> this used to be make balance the concentration of the ions inside and outside used to make a, a complex balance for the biochemical for the biochemical survival of the particular cell uh, in that cases so uh, somebody somewhat told the parcel right in this cases the uh, if you can see a uh, few example given here you can see your sodium potassium calcium uh, this uh, you can see over here inside and outside concentration take a look of this part just one example given here <laughs> sodium outside is more inside is less potassium outside less inside is more calcium outside more inside less that is what we can see over here the uh, millimole per liter concentration is indicating as well as each and every cells are having some sort of adpa systems are there sodium potassium adpa system is there calcium pump is there many many others uh, chloride and uh, bicarbonate many many other pumping systems are there hydrogen pumps are there so they are different they are actually if you see the ionic balance uh, their uh, ionic concentration inside and outside the cell membrane it is absolutely different and that is required for the biochemical survival of the particular cells that is remember that that is very important thing now this survival uh, this difference of ionic different of the uh, concentration of the iron or uh, difference of the uh, inside and outside of the cell membrane or, or uh, surface membrane you can see over here if this is the intracellular fluid intracellular fluid you can see over here the concentration different of the, the difference uh, uh, ions in and out the difference is actually called the membrane potential this is actually called the membrane potential you can see over here this difference makes some sort of uh, uh, potential changes that is actually called the membrane potential means outside uh, positivity or negativity inside positivity and negativity will not be same there will be a, some sort of difference that is called the uh, and that difference making some sort of potential changes that is called the membrane potential so if you see if you see if you uh, see inside is negative more negative outside is more positive so if you place two electrodes uh, one in in and one is one is outside of the cell surface you can record some sort of uh, a voltage differences that is actually called the membrane potential am i clear to all of you so uh, the positivity cation and anions inside of the cells and cation and anions outside of the cell membrane will be not same that will be different and because of that only if you place one electrode inside one electrodes in inside of the cell membrane another electrode outside of the cell membrane and if you record the difference of this potential that is called the membrane potential you can see over here this can uh, represent as a bm b capital m small bm it is also can be recorded as a bm now if you see uh, if this question ask you uh, what is the first you have to mention the definition that i told you examples example for the memory uh, uh, this uh, this uh, 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 examples uh, uh, what is the definition definition is what in case of resting membrane potential what is the definition during resting uh, condition resting condition of any cell not in activated state you are not activating the particular cells in the resting conditions during resting conditions if you see during resting condition the potential difference across the cell membrane during resting condition the potential difference across the cell membrane is called the resting membrane potential so how it is that that is in case of muscles uh, it is different it is case of uh, uh, in, in case of skeletal muscle it is different in case of smooth muscle it is different in case of nerve it is different so in case of nerve fibers you can if you can see there is a minus 70 millivolt in case of skeletal muscle there is around uh, minus 90 millivolt in case of smooth muscle there is around uh, uh, minus 50 uh, some sort of fluctuation is there so that is uh, uh, that is the examples now how you record as i told you first Sir, Servants, please repeat the definition, sir. Definition is that during uh, the potential difference or uh, potential difference across the membrane of a particular cells during resting condition, it is called the 
resting membrane potential. The potential difference we have seen, the membrane potential, that is the potential difference actually inside and outside of the cell membrane we have seen, that is different. And we have recorded, we can say there is a membrane potential. During resting condition, the membrane potential is called the resting membrane potential. During resting condition, when the cell is not in active, not in not producing any action potential in that condition, so not uh, producing any kind of depolarization in that condition. So during resting conditions, the potential differences across the membrane across the membrane means in, in the intercellular fluid and extracellular fluid across the membrane that is actually called the uh, resting membrane potential now the examples what are the examples if you can give that is in case of nerve fibers it is a minus 70 millivolt in case of muscles uh, skeletal muscles minus 90 millivolt in case of smooth muscle it is around minus 50 millivolt okay that is the uh, examples you can give give in this part well, now how to record this one? Okay, as I told you, if you place one electrode inside of the cell and if you place one another electrode outside of the cell membrane, you can record the difference of the potential, potential differences over there. Now, how to uh, uh, do that one? One important technique is the very old technique that is called cathode ray oscilloscope. Cathode ray, this is called cathode ray oscilloscope. In this case, uh, in, in these cases, you can see the cathodes are there. You can see over here. Here are the two uh, electrodes, one positive, one negative electrodes, placed inside and outside of the cell membrane. And this uh, producing some sort of electrical beams, which is uh, passing through these horizontal and vertical plates uh, and producing some sort of spots and some sort of pulse over there. Anyway, that's a complex technique. Just remember that. This is the uh, this is the technique here. You can see it is called the cathode ray oscilloscope through which you can uh, uh, you can measure the resting membrane potential or membrane potential you can say okay so both cases you can measure by this one that is called cathode ray oscilloscope cathode ray oscilloscope so uh, by which you can say uh, we can use we can measure the uh, uh, resting membrane potential so definitions then examples and how to measure mentioned in one line that this resting membrane potential or the membrane potential can be uh, measured by the technique which is called the cathode ray oscilloscope in this part <laughs> now uh, how these differences happen what is the basic need basic reason behind that there are thousands of reasons out there but very few, few reasons are very important out there so what are the important reasons you need to see in this case the causes so causes if you see in, in this part uh, just take a look of the distribution of sodium uh, uh, potassium uh, and chlorides in and outside of the cell membrane just take a look of this part Watch it very carefully. If you see intracellular and extracellular concentration of the sodium, potassium, and chloride is different. Yes or no? Is it so or not? This is millimole per liter. It is representing millimole per liter. So uh, you can see over here. <clears throat> now, uh, how it is happened? What are the mechanism we need to see in these cases? Take a look at this part. Sodium, sodium is outside is more, inside is less. Outside 150 to 155 millimole per liter, inside 15, uh, 10 to 15 millimole per liter. Potassium, you see, inside is more, 150 millimole per liter. Outside is uh, 5 millimole, 5 to 10, uh, 5 to 6 millimole per liter. Chlorine outside is more, 120 millimole per liter, and inside is 10 millimole per liter. And uh, here some uh, large protein molecules are there, which, is, uh, uh, which are in, uh, negatively charged. That is basically what is basically concentration. You can see around 100 millimole per uh, liter. You can see uh, large protein molecules here. These are the large protein molecules inside, which are carrying the negative charge. And its outside is very less, or even 0 0.2 millimole actually. Inside, large protein molecules are there inside of the cells, which are producing negative charge over there, which are carrying the negative charge over here. Now, uh, this is the difference as we can see. Now, this membrane potential, resting membrane potential, actually, you can see uh, is basically depends on the permeability of these ions across the membrane. Okay, the permeability of the uh, of this uh, uh, of these ions, you can see sodium, potassium, calcium, uh, chloride across the membrane, as well as <coughs> there. Uh, 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 this is one important thing. As well as there are some pumping systems up there. Which are also responsible for this uh, maintenance of the resting membrane potential in these cases. Now, how they are and what are the mechanisms we need to see in these cases very carefully. Okay, 
so we have seen remember that in these cases uh, uh, in these cases uh, that uh, sodium outside is more inside less potassium inside more outside less chlorine inside more, less outside more and some uh, negatively charged protein molecule uh, protein molecules are higher in the inside of the cell membrane compared to the outside basically if you can see uh, if you can record in case of na5 our resting membrane potential is around minus 70 millivolt means that indicates that inside of the cell membrane is more negative than the outside <coughs> that is what it is representing now how it is uh, how it is happened we need to see so uh, normally you can see normally you can see uh, cell membrane is a semi semi, semi permeable membrane you know and <coughs> it is allowing for the uh, diffusion of some uh, uh, of some um, uh, of some particular substances which are soluble which are permeable or uh, soluble you can say over there now how it is happened so uh, sodium and potassium both to have capacity to diffuse across this membrane take a look at this part sodium potassium and chloride both have, uh, all three compounds having capacity to diffuse across the membrane they having some sort of channels channel proteins are there they having some sort of channel sodium channels uh, potassium channels and chloride channels are there uh, particular channels are there which are called the leak channels just take a look of this part so here is the sodium channels uh, these are potassium channels this is the sodium channels it is called leak channels okay and uh, basically these two channels are found chlorine channels are very less over there okay now if you see in case of membrane the potassium leak channels are more compared to the sodium leak channels potassium leak channels are more so what will be happen potassium which was inside is more automatically along the uh, concentration gradient that will be moved from in to out automatically because inside potassium is more so potassium will move from in to out automatically sodium which is concentration is uh, more outside so it having tendency to move from outside to inside but as because the uh, sodium leak channels are less in number you can see uh, uh, very less in number so the movement of the sodium from out to in is become less compared to the potassium so potassium moving out more okay that is making the uh, uh, making the cells inside to be negative in this case as you can see over here because positive charge which was more potassium that is uh, moving uh, along the concentration gradient it is moving from in to out because outside was the potassium concentration is less over there that is what you can see over here now here one important term is there that is called uh, potassium equilibrium so how this potassium equilibrium potential of the potassium how this movement takes place that is very interesting here as i told you one thing is that <coughs> uh, there are two driving force for the movement of this potassium one is along the concentration gradient another is against the concentration gradient how it is let's take a look of this part potassium inside is more and outside is less potassium inside is 150 outside is less around 5 now potassium is moving from in to out along the concentration gradient through the potassium leak channel because potassium leak channels are more in number in the membrane okay now this is uh, one thing as well as so potassium positive charge moving in to out so inside become negative now negative wants to inter uh, wants to trap the positive ions it wants to trap the potassium ions back to the inside so there is a there is a two types of uh, uh, two type two types of uh, force is actually acting in this part one is uh, allowing the potassium to in to move into out and another is responsible to trap the potassium inside the negative charge is more inside because of the movement of more amount of potassium into out so negative charge will build up inside as well as negative charge will build up because of this protein large protein molecules which are negatively charged they are responsible they are trying to trap the potassium inside because it is positively charged negative will be attract the positive so it will be uh, trap it trying to trap the potassium ion inside so there is a two types of uh, force is acting on the potassium ion and that is how it is making the balance here so that is called uh, diffusions or equilibrium potassium uh, equilibrium, equilibrium potential of the potassium that is called the equilibrium equilibrium potential of the potassium okay this equilibrium potential is mathematically uh, uh, presented by one important uh, uh, equation is that that is called nernst equations n e r n s t n e r n s t equations that is uh, uh, that is uh, uh, that can explain this one um, that how this uh, mechanism takes place okay so uh, i think we are already 10 minutes more so uh, in the next class uh, tomorrow we'll talk about the remaining things that how the other mechanism because it's a diverse thing it is actually a very diverse thing here you need to clearly understood how the mechanism takes place simply you cannot say potassium moving from in to out sodium moving from out to in and uh, chlorine also moving uh, that that you cannot say here you need to have a clear concept how these types of movement takes place 
then only you can understand in future different uh, uh, relevant things will discuss and then only you can understand how uh, those uh, mechanisms are also acting in this part because already we have talked about in the uh, general physiology have seen about the different uh, voltage gated channels like and gated channels there you have seen different mechanically gated channels we have seen some channel proteins we have seen over there uh, some pumping system also we have seen now here you can see uh, here you can see those things will be highly applicable in this part and uh, the ionic balance which is maintained uh, ionic balance which is be, which will be maintained uh, in a crucial way that maintain that is responsible to develop the resting potential or the action potential and that is responsible next we'll see uh, that is responsible for the propagation of one action potential one develop in one particular area of the nerve fiber or, or the muscle fiber that is to propagate from one area to the another area uh, that is a very uh, because of this uh, closing opening of the particular channels uh, or some sort of systems pumping system it's very interesting so we'll talk in the next class let's go for the attendance here okay up to that is clear for all of you or not yes sir yes sir okay so tomorrow uh, you need to prepare the answer for uh, that neural de uh, degeneration regeneration process make the answer for nine marks okay make the answer for the nine marks and i'll ask anyone to read that uh, during the class hours and uh, we'll go accordingly okay roll number one present sir Two. present sir yes present sir so for that for that question what are the subheadings sir Subheadings already told in the uh, in the PPT. Okay, sir. That is the subheading, sir. Under which you have to explain. No, sir. Like uh, for previous questions you gave, no, sir. So like that, I am asking much. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Uh, just okay. I will tell you. Uh, first, you write down the types of injury. Type one, type two, type three, type four. Causes. What are the causes? Okay. Then you go for the uh, degenerative changes. Degenerative changes uh, happen in case of fifth degree injury. What are the degenerative changes happen? Okay. Next you go for yes, the degenerative yes. changes. During the regeneration, how the things that takes place, that is you need to mention. And last you need to mention the nerve growth factors. Okay. The nerve growth factors are releasing from the swan cells. Nerve growth factors are released by the other soft, like uh, which are the neurotrophins, uh, cell addition molecules. Uh, you can say uh, brain derived uh, neurotrophic factors that is also you can mention so they are responsible for that like that schematic this is the schematic representations as the servitings are there according to that only or you can make it better also the concept is that only okay types of injuries and uh, degenerative changes regenerative, changes, regenerative changes, changes degenerative changes in the cell body degenerative changes in the proximal tube degenerative changes in the distal tube that is then you go for the regeneration regeneration how many to start how it is goes on that is you need to mention all that and factors sir proximal Thank tube distal tube proximal tube uh, basically mention about the changes takes place in the distal tube and uh, mm -hmm. uh, the same things will be takes place in the proximal tubes only up to the next node of randomly where the damage happened up to the next node of randomly towards the proximal tube that will there only the same changes takes place what are the changes takes place in the distal tube sir Yes. So that proximal tube you said no, sir. Proximal side also that next to the node of Nanmier only regeneration takes place. Yeah. Uh, that uh, old part will be remaining. Uh, that first part yeah. which is not uh, degenerated that will be remaining as it is. Yeah. Thank you. Roll number two. Three. Two present, sir. Three. 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 Seven. Present. Eight. Present, sir. Present, Nine. sir. Nine. Absent, sir. Four, 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 seven, eight. Uh, ten. Present, sir. Eleven. Ten present, sir. Yes, eleven.
Roll number 11. Sir, 11 present, sir. 12. 12 present, sir. 13. 13 present, sir. 14. 14 present, sir. 13, 13. 13 present, sir. 15. 15 present, sir. 16. 16 present, sir. 17. 17 present, sir. Number camera out. Okay. 18. 18 present, sir. 19. 19 present, sir. 20. 20 present, sir. 21. 21 present, sir. 22. 22 present, sir. 23. 24. 24. 24 25 25 present sir 26 26 present sir 26 7 27 27 present sir 28 28 present sir 29 29 present sir 30 30 present sir 31 present, sir. 32. 32 present, sir. 33. 33 present, sir. 34. 34 present, sir. 35. 35 present, sir. 36. 36 present. 37. 37 present, sir. 38. 38 present, sir. 39. 39 present, sir. 40. 40 present, sir. 41. 41 present, sir. 42. 42 present, sir. 43. 43 present, sir. 44. 44 present, sir. 45. 45 present, sir. 46. 46 present, sir. 7. 40 present, sir. 48. 48 present, sir. 49. 49 present, sir. 50, 50 present, sir. 51. 51 present, sir. 52. 53. 53 present, sir. 54. 54 present, sir. 55 55 56 56 present sir 57 57 57 present sir 58 58 present sir 9 59 present sir 61 61 present 61 present 55 present. switch on the camera 55 roll out 55 switch on the camera roll number 55 switch on the camera or else will be absent Next, 61, 61, 62, 62 present, sir, 63, 62 present, sir, 4, 64 present, sir, 65, 65 present, sir, 6, 66 present, sir. 67. 67. 67, where gone, man? 68. 68 present, sir. 69. 69 present, sir. 20. 
सेवेंटी प्रेजेंट सर सेवेंटी वन प्रेजेंट सर प्रेजेंट सर सेवेंटी टू प्रेजेंट सर सेवेंटी थ्री प्रेजेंट सर स्विच ऑन द कैमरा टर्न फोर सेवेंटी फोर सेवेंटी फोर ओके सो एबसेंट इज आर थ्री ट्वेंटी फोर फिफ्टी फाइव सिक्सटी सेवन सेवेंटी फोर थैंक यू थैंक यू